Ninth Hour Introduction Pausing by the majesty of this great Nichir in this cavern, he gives orders from his bark to the Nichiru who are in it. The crew of the bark of this Nichir also rests at this place. The name of the gate of this place through which the Nichir enters, that he rests upon the water which is in this place, is Guardian of the Flood. The name of this place is Flowing Forth of Images with Living Manifestations. The name of the hour of the night which guides this great Nuchar, she who adores and protects her Lord. The mysterious cavern of the West where the great Nuchar and his crew rest in the Duat. These are done with their names like this image which is painted on the eastern side of the hidden chamber of the Duat. Whoever knows their names on earth and knows their thrones in the West will occupy his throne in the Duat standing among the Lord's provision, and declared Ma'acharu by the tribunal on the day of judgment. It is useful for him on earth. Upper Register Twelve mummies are seated on the hieroglyph for clothing. They belong to the tribunal of the Nichiru. Terrible of earth, who is adorned? Linen clothed, who belongs to clothes? Who is clothed? He of the basket, substitute of the Nutyar, substitute of the Ennead, who annihilates the Ach spirits, Lord of the Elite, who unifies with hidden arm. They are like this in the Duat, remaining on their clothing, as linen clothed and as images made by Haru. Ra says to them, You are adorned with your clothing. You are protected by your dress. Haru has adorned you with them when he hid his father in the Dua'at, which conceals Nacheru. May your heads be uncovered, Nacheru, and may your faces be open, that you perform your duties for Ausir, that you adore the Lord of the West. May you justify his voice against the enemies, day after day. It is the tribunal of the Nacheru which interrogates because of Ausir, day after day. What they have to do in the Dua'at, felling the enemies of Ausir. Twelve Nichirut walking in the train of Ausir. She who goes forth, wanderer of the Ach spirits, mistress of slaughter, mistress of awe, great of plague, mistress of trembling, organizer of her place, mistress of habitations. Who protects the valley? Great of brilliance, powerful of speech, musician of Ra. They are like this in their bodies of the Dua'at, as images made by Haru. This Nuchar, he calls to them after he has reached them, and they breathe when they hear his voice. What they have to do in the Dua'at perform the raising of Ausir and to let the secret ba soul alight through their words. They are those who raise up life and well-being at the appearance of him of the Dua'at when he greets the Dua'at day after day. These are the Nucharut walking in the following of Ausir when he has entered the Dua'at. Middle Register In the Middle Register, the Sun Bark has the usual form and crew. The Twelve Oarsmen the bark, their paddles in their hands are standing in front of the bark. Wepau Wa'wet, opener of the ways. Sia, percipients. Lady of the bark, Mahan serpent. Flesh of Ra, Haru of fragrance. Bull of Ma'at, the vigilant one. Hu, utterance. Guide of the bark. This great Nuchar rests with his rowers at this place, and his crew, they rest in his bark, in his mysterious image of the Mahan serpent. This great Nuchar gives orders to the Nucharu who are in this place. The rower, the imperishable, the indefatigable, who knows no turning back, who knows no hindrance, who knows no decay, rowing in his hour, who crosses his land, who rests in the bark, the most divine, who traverses the Dua'at, who belongs to the boat, 
These are the Netiru of the crew of the bark of Ra, rowing him who is in the horizon until he sets in the eastern gateway of the sky. What they have to do in the Dua'at. Rowing the Ra to this place day after day. They stand by the water of the bark which is in this place. They are those who give water with their oars to the Ah spirits who are in this place and who praise the Lord of the sun disk. They are those who display the Ba soul in this form by their mysterious words day after day. At the end of the register follow three divine idols on baskets and a standing mummy. The idols are human-headed with two feathers, ram-headed and cow-headed with a sun disk between the horns. Offer in front of the Dua'at. Hyarti in front of the Dua'at. Mistress of offerings in front of the Dua'at. Offerer of the Nacheru. They are like this in this place. They are those who give offerings to the Nacheru who are in the Dua'at, to whom Ra has commanded bread and beer. The Nacheru proceed in the following of this great Nacher to the eastern horizon of the sky, when the Nacheru of the Dua'at have been satisfied. Lower Register The lower register opens with twelve fire-spitting cobras, each upon the hieroglyph for clothing. The names of the Uraeus serpent who spit fire for Ausir, foremost of the Dua'at, with the flame in their mouth. They swallow their flames again after this great Nutyar has passed by them. She with painful flame, the fiery one, the flaming one, who protects the Dua'at, who repels the tumult, she with bright stars, she with living face, she with distinguished shape, she with perfect appearance, she with great form, mistress of embers, mistress of heat. They are like this in the Dua'at. They stay on their clothes in their own flesh. They are those who illuminate the darkness in the chamber containing Ausir. It is the flame of their mouth which causes the slaughter in the Dua'at. They are those who repel every serpent in the earth, whose form even he of the Dua'at, Ra, does not know. They live on the blood of those whom they behead day after day. Neither Ach spirits nor the dead are able to pass them, owing to the mystery of their forms. He who knows them sees their forms and does not perish at their flames. The next scene consists of nine standing Nuteru of the fields with staffs and ah signs in their hands. Their staffs should be the jam scepter, but sometimes are shaped as palm branches or stalks of grain. A mummy as guardian of this region follows at the end of the register. Who belongs to the field? Who is in his field? Who belongs to the bud? Who belongs to the jam scepter? Lord of the staff, scepter of his Nacheru, who acts clever, who acts unapproachable, the appraised of the fields. Haru above the garden of those of the Dua'at. These are the Nacheru of the fields of this place, lords of life bearing scepters. They are like this. They stand bearing their Ach signs and supported by their Jam scepters. This great Nacher he calls to them. They are those who present staves to the Nacheru in the Dua'at at this place. They are those who cause all the trees and all the plants of this place to grow. Haru, who is over the garden of the Nacheru, is the guardian of the image of this region. Tenth Hour Introduction Pausing by the majesty of this great Nacher in this cavern, he gives orders to the Nacheru who are in it. The name of the gate of this place through which the great Nacher enters is, with great manifestations, giving birth to forms. The name of this place is, with deep water and high banks. The name of this hour of the night which guides this great Nacher to the mysterious paths of this place is, the Furious who slaughters him with crooked heart. 
the mysterious cavern of the west, where Chapari rest with Ra, at which Nucheru, Ach spirits, and the dead lament because of the mysterious image in the beyond. This is done like this image which is painted on the eastern side of the hidden chamber of the Dua'at. He who knows them by their names traverses the Dua'at right to the end without being expelled from the council of Ra. Upper Register A standing Nutyar with Wa'as, scepter, and Ach in his hands and a scarab holding up an oval with dots as an image of the Dua'at open the Upper Register. Who acts clever, living beetle. They are like this in the Dua'at, as forms and shapes of Khapari when he carries his oval to his place, to go forth afterwards to the eastern horizon of the sky. Two half-sitting Nucharut, wearing the red and the white crown, are framing a double serpent supporting the sun disk, followed by two other half-sitting Nucharut, who are putting their hands on a hieroglyph for Nuchar, with a smaller red disk on top of it, According to the text, the discs are the two eyes of Ra, red crown, the double coiled, white crown, she who fetters, hieroglyphs missing, the wrapped staff, she who laments or embraces the Nucheru. These Nucheru are like this. The left eye, it goes forth from the double coiled. The right eye, it goes forth from the wrapped staff. The Ba souls lament to them in the earth when they have endowed the Ach spirits in the Dua'at because of the mysterious image which is in it. Then they swallow their images again after this great Nuchar has passed them. Eight Nucharut, all with Wa'as and Ach in their hands. The first four lion-headed are followed by a sitting baboon holding the Uja'at eye in his hands. The accompanying text is concerned with the healing of the eye of Haru, Sachmet, the powerful one, Menkaret, a lion nechert, Maiden, she of the Wa'as scepter, messenger of the Nucheru, whom Tachinen has made, she who is standing, she with powerful arm, flesh who carries his eye. The Nucharut, who inspect the eye of Haru for him in the Duat. Ra says to them, Power to your forms, you powerful ones, that you inspect the eye of Haru for him, that you may make firm the eye of Haru for him, that you appease Haru with his image, that you give strength to Haru with his eye, that you establish for him his prime eye, which is in the arms of flesh who carries his eye. You are those who salute Haru, who came into being and caused manifestations to become. What they have to do in the Dua'at. Protecting the eye of Haru for him, letting the brilliant eye be healthy day after day. The eight Nucheru of the last scene have a punishing function. The first of them wears two ropes in place of the head. The second is jackal-headed. The third, hawk-headed. The fourth, human-headed. All with Wa'as and Aach in their hands and followed by four figures of Ausir holding the Wa'as scepter. Twin-armed, Lord of Entry, who hides the forms, Master of Secrets, Great Sire, the Great Hidden One, who is before his place, who is before his thighs. They are like this as images made by Haru. When this great Nichir calls them by their names, they are satisfied, and their throats breathe the air which is in the mouth of this great Nuchyar. Their ba souls, they proceed in his following to the horizon. They are those who strip the corpses and rip the wrappings of the foes, whose punishment is decreed in the Dua'at. Middle Register The sun bark in the Middle Register and its crew remain unchanged. The text above her alludes to the drowned ones in the lower register. Wepau Wa'wet, Opener of the Ways, Sia, Percipients, Lady of the Bark, Mahan Serpent, Flesh of Ra, Haru of Fragrance, Bull of Ma'at, The Vigilant One, Hu, Utterance, Guide of the Bark, 
This great Nutyar proceeds in this place, like this in his bark. His crew of Nutyaru, they row him. The Nutyaru who are in this place rest in the water in which their oars are. They breathe through the sound of rowing of this crew of Nutyaru. In front of the boat, two standing Nutyarut with the red and the white crown frame a two-headed serpent, also equipped with the red and the white crown and with four legs carrying a hawk on its body. According to the accompanying text, the hawk is the ba soul of Sokar. Archer, foremost of the sky, uniting faces, she who is on the other side. They are like this as carrier of the uniting faces. It is the ba soul of Sokar, foremost of the dua. This entire image passes along in the following of this great Nutyar to the horizon and then it enters again into the earth day after day. Lying in a boat, a hawk-headed serpent follows. The living one of the earth. He is like this in his bark. He rises against the unified darkness at the gateway of the eastern horizon and then he assumes his place again day after day. It is the protecting serpent of the Duat the unapproachable Ba'asol of Chenti Amentio Alser. The twelve Nutyaru following, one for every hour, form the bodyguard of Ra, protecting him against all his enemies. The first four with a spear and the last four a bow. Disc head. Arrow shooter. Bundler. Slinger. Shooter. Hurler. Averter who causes pain, archer, bowman, who binds together, who shows his arm. Text above the armed Nichiru. They are like this, bearing their arrows, bearing their spears, and carrying their bows before this great Nichir. They go forth with him to the eastern horizon of the sky. This great Nichir addresses them. Speed to your arrows, sharpness to your spears, tension to your bows, that you punish for me my enemies who are in the darkness beyond the horizon. You belong to me, to my following, when I rest in the counter heaven, and when my flesh is strong in the Maanjet day bark. They are those who fend off the rebel, horrible of face in the unified darkness, so that this great Nutyar may pass into the eastern gateway of the horizon. After that, they proceed with this great Nutyar. Lower Register The Lower Register starts with the hawk-headed Haru, wearing a sun disk on his head and leaning on a staff in front of a huge rectangle filled with water. Floating in the water are twelve swimmers in groups of four, shown in different positions. The text describes this apotheosis by drowning. Haru The drowned ones in the Dua'at the upturned ones in the Dua'at, those who are stretched out in the Dua'at. Text above the drowned ones. Words spoken by Haru to the drowned, to the upturned, to those stretched out who are in the noon and belong to the Dua'at. Oh, drowned ones who are dark in the noon, whose arms are near their faces. Oh, you with upturned faces in the Dua'at, whose spines belong to the flood. O oh, you who row the water of noon, stretched out, whose faces are behind their ba souls, heir to your ba souls, that they need not be constricted, rowing for your arms without their being held back. You prepare your way in the noon with your legs, without your knees being hindered. You go forth to the flood and come near the waves. You float to the great inundation, that you moor at its shores. Your body has not decayed, your flesh has not decomposed. You dispose of your water, and you breathe what I have commanded for you. You are those who are in the waters of noon, floating in the following of my father, so that your ba souls may live. At the end of the register, four Nutyarut appear with serpents on their heads, followed by a crook, out of the top of which the head of Suchuk emerges. She who annihilates, she who glows, she who pierces, Uraeus serpent, crook of Nahas, Sotok. They are like this, their living images on their heads, 
They are those who illuminate the way for Ra in the unified darkness, that he may go forth through the eastern gateway. The crook of Nahas, Suchach, it goes with him. Eleventh Hour Introduction Pausing by the majesty of this great Nuchar in this cavern, he gives orders to the Nuchar who are in it. The name of the gate of this place through which the great Nuchar enters is Resting Place of Those of the Duat. The name of this place is Mouth of the Cavern which examines the corpses. The name of the hour of the night which guides this great Nuchar is Starry Lady of the Bark who repels the enemy when he appears. The mysterious cavern of the Duat, which this great Nuchar passes to come out from the eastern mountain of the sky. Time swallows her images in front of the seer who is in this place, and returns them afterwards from the birth of Chapari in the earth. This is done exactly like this image which is painted on the eastern side of the hidden chamber of the Duat. Whoever knows it participates in offerings as a well-provided Ach spirit in heaven and earth. A true remedy. Upper Register The first Nechir in the Upper Register has two heads, crowned with the white and the red crown, and a sun disk between them. In his hands he is holding Wa'as and Ach. He seems to be Ra as master of time in its double aspect, Nechach and Jet. He is like this. He rises for Ra without leaving his place of the Dua'at. He with equipped face, Lord of Time. The winged serpent in front of him is walking on four legs, and the wings are grasped by the Nuchar Atum, wearing a sun disk on his head. Above the scene are two Uja'at eyes. Atum, Petri, the seer. He is like this. When this Nuchar calls to him, the image of Atum comes forth from his back. Then he swallows his image again. He lives on the shadows of the dead, that is, his corpse and the heads. The final scene concerned with the mystery of time consists of ten of eleven stars, meaning the hours elapsed till now. In front of the Nechert, time, jet, sitting on another serpent. Thus time is represented here as the body of a serpent out of which the individual hours are born and swallowed again. Time, jet, he who takes away the hours. Her own body, she is upon he who takes away the hours. What she has to do, to live through the voice of Ra, day after day. She swallows her images, again, at this place. It is the eleventh hour, one of those who follow this Nuchar. Twelve Nuchar follow, the first with two heads, the second ram-headed, holding Was and Ach. The third raises his arms in adoration. The fourth has two serpent heads and no arms. In some copies, he and the following Nachiru are without clothes. The next four Nachiru also have no arms, and the last four are again provided with arms. He with double head. Chnum Renit. He who guards the earth, whose two arms are in him. Judge of the two lands. He who commands his two arms, whose two arms are hidden, who strengthens the flesh, who adores Haru, the right, just one. Mesach Etzio, Dipper Constellation, who restrains the arm. Text above the twelve Nuchiru. They are like this. This great Nuchir calls them by their names. Come forth to me, hidden ones. Shine for me, you with secret arm. Life to your ba souls, that they may alight upon your shadows. You are those who reveal what is hidden, and put the image to its forbidden place. To you belongs the air, which is in my mouth, that your noses may breathe through it. Offerings belong to you, which are on my bark, that your ba souls may live from it. Water belongs to you from the overflow of noon, which gives water to those of the duat there. Hail, just Ah, are your actions. Your ba souls belong to the retinue of my manifestations. 
what they have to do in the du'at, lifting the mystery of this great nichar to the hidden chamber day after day. They go forth with this great nichar to the sky. In the last scene of the register, four nichar are seated on the body of double cobras. With one hand they grasp the bodies of the serpents, the other is held before their faces. Lady of the living, Lady of the Ach spirits, she who guards the two banks, guardian of the Nucharu. They are like this. Their thighs are in the earth, Ta'a, Du'a'at, their feet in the unified darkness. This great Nucharu calls them in their own bodies. Then they wail without leaving their places. Their Ba'a souls live from the voice of the image which goes forth from their feet day after day. The counterwind and the hurricane go forth, created in the Du'a'at from the faces of these Nacharut. Middle Register The sun bark in the middle register has an addition to its usual crew, a sun disk on the prow which is guiding Ra towards the end of the Du'a'at. Wapau Wa'awet, Opener of the Ways. Sia, Percipients. Lady of the Bark, Mahan Serpent. Flesh of Ra, Haru of Fragrance, Bull of Ma'at, The Vigilant One, Hu, Utterance, Guide of the Bark, The Shining One of the Du'at. This great Nichar proceeds in this place like this. His crew of Nicharu rows him toward the eastern horizon of the sky. The Shining One upon the Bark guides this great Nichar to the ways of darkness through that which is in it illuminating those who are in the earth. Twelve Nichiru in front of the boat carry a huge coiled serpent on their heads. Their names allude to their function and a longer text describes the scene. Bearer, Carrier, The Loaded One, The One Who Grasps, The One Who Receives, He With Firm Arm, He Who Takes Hold, The Pleasant One, He Who Pulls Out, he who embraces, he who conducts the image, he who belongs to the encircler. They are like this in front of this great Nichir. They carry the world encircler of the earth upon them to this place, and they proceed in the following of Ra to the eastern horizon of the sky. This Nichir, he calls them by their names and orders them what they have to do. Ra says to them, Do protect your images and raise your heads, strength to your arms, endurance to your feet. May your proceeding be right, may your steps be fast. May you be content with your offerings at the gateway of the eastern horizon. What they have to do in the Du'a'at, putting the Mahan serpent on its way to the eastern gateway of the horizon. Then they occupy their thrones again, after this great Nichir has passed through the darkness, that they may rest in the horizon. Two cobras carry the red and the white crown, with small heads emerging from the crowns. They are Auset and Nebtchot, as Uraeus serpents. Image of Auset, Image of Nebtchot. These are the images concealed by Haru. They are at the second gate of the unified darkness, on the forbidden path of Sa'it. When this Nuchar calls to them, then their secret heads appear. After that, they swallow their images again. Of the last four Nicharut, two are wearing the red crown, two the white crown. They are all manifestations of the Nichert Nait, standing at the gate of Sa'it, where Nait is venerated. Male Nait, Nait with the red crown, Nait with the white crown, Nait Auser. They are like this at this gate as images made by Haru. This Nichert he calls them by their names, and they breathe when hearing his voice. They are those who guard the forbidden gate of Sa'it, which is unknown, unseen, and unperceived. Lower Register In the lower register, the punishment of the enemies is shown. Haru, with a sun disk on his hawk head, leaning on a staff and holding a short serpent-headed wand, decrees their total extinction, which is done in six pits filled with fire. A serpent and five Nicharut holding knives are spitting fire into the pits. They contain the bound enemies, their corpses, 
their ba- souls, their shadows, and their heads. The last pit, four inverted figures. Haru, he who burns millions. Enemies, she above her kettles. Corpses of the enemies. She above her pits. Ba souls of the enemies. She who severs. Shadows of the enemies. She above her slaughtering blocks. Heads of the enemies. She above her knives. Those upside down. Wadi of those upside down. Orders given by the majesty of this Nichet to the slaughter of those who beat his father, Ausir. That is, the corpses of the enemies, the limbs of the dead, those who are upside down, hindered on going, and the shapes of the annihilated. Haru speaks. I have come forth from him, and now my father strikes back after he has been weary. Punishment for your corpses by the knife. Punisher. Annihilation for your ba souls. Trampling down for your shadows. Severing for your heads. You have not come into being. You are upside down. You will not rise since you have fallen into your pits. You cannot escape. You cannot evade. The fire of he who burns millions is against you. The fiery glow of she above her kettles is against you. The flames of she above her pits is against you. The embers from the mouth of she above her slaughtering blocks are against you. The knife of she above her knives is in you. She severs you, she commits your slaughter, and you will not see those living on earth eternally. They are like this in the Du'at. Their slaughter is decreed day after day by the majesty of Haru of the Du'at. Behind the pits, four standing Nutarut wear the sign for desert on their heads, since the destruction of the enemies takes place in the eastern desert before sunrise. They are followed by the guardian of the hour holding Wa'as and Ach. Their text is still concerned with punishment. She who boils, she who heats, she above her sand, she who destroys, he above his kettles. They are like this. They are those who make a bloody punishment among the enemies of Ausir and the Du'at. The one over his kettles is the guardian of this cavern. They live on the voice of the enemies, on the screaming of the ba souls and the shadows whom they throw into their pits. Twelfth Hour Introduction Pausing by the majesty of this great Nuchar in this cavern of the end of the unified darkness, this great Nuchar is born in his manifestations of Khepari at this cavern. Nun and Nunet, Hahu and Hahut, emerge at this cavern at the birth of this great Nuchar, that he goes forth from the Duat, places himself in the Manjet Debark, and appears from the thighs of Nut. The name of the gate of this place is, which raises the Nucharu. The name of this place is, with emerging darkness and appearing births. The name of the hour of the night at which this great Nuchar regenerates is, beholding the perfection of Ra. The mysterious cavern of the Duat, at which this great Nuchar is born, that he goes forth from noon and sets at the body of Nut. This is made like this image which is painted on the eastern side of the hidden chamber in the Duat. It is beneficial for whoever knows it, on earth, in heaven, and in the earth. Upper Register The Upper Register has two scenes. In the first, twelve Nichirut are wearing fire-spitting serpents around their shoulders. Their function is described by the text above them. She who appears in beauty. She who prepares the way for Ra. Lady of the Earth Powers. Mistress of Cobras. She who makes the two banks of the sky prosper. She who rejoices in her two lands. She who is elevated in her forms. She who is powerful by her magic power. She who acclaims Ra in his forms. She who beholds the corpse when his bark stops. She who came forth from the front of Ra. Lady of the Uraeus serpents in the bark of millions. They are like this in their own bodies. Their Uraeus serpents go forth from their shoulders when this great Nuchar has reached this place. 
They belong to those who follow this Nachar. It is the flames in the mouth of their Urea serpents which fend off Ra'apepi from Ra'a at the eastern gateway of the horizon. They traverse the sky beyond him in their place of the Manjet Debarg. These Nutyaru turn back when this great Nutyar has passed the secret sandbank of the sky. Then they rest again on their thrones. They are those who delight the hearts of the Nutyaru of the West with Ra-Harakti. What they have to do in the earth is to give release to those in the darkness with the torches of their Uraeus serpents. When they return after they have escorted ra after having punished Ha'apepi for him in the sky. The following group of twelve Nucharu raise their arms in adoration of Ra and his rebirth in the morning. Lord of life, he who acclaims, Lord of jubilation, Lord of adorations, he with pleasant heart, he who rejoices because of Ra, he with joyful heart, the child, he who praises the left eye, he who renews the heads of the Nucharu, he who restores the heads of the Nucharu, he who praises Khapari. Text above the scene. They are like this. They adore this great Nuchara at dawn, when he rests in the eastern gateway of the sky. They say to Ra, Born is he who is born, who has emerged, has emerged, venerated of the earth, ba soul of the Lord of heaven. The sky belongs to your ba-soul, that it may rest in it. The earth belongs to your corpse, Lord of veneration. You have seized the horizon, that you rest in your shrine. The two Nucharut raise you with their body. Acclamation to you, ba-soul, which is in heaven. Your two daughters receive you in your form. What they have to do in the Duat, praising this great Nuchar. They stand at this place. They are counted among the turquoise Nucharu. The turquoise Nucharu give acclamation to Ra when he sets in the sky and appears in the eyes of the Hanumet, sun folk. Then these Nucharu rest again in their cavern. Middle Register The sun bark with its crew in the middle register now has an additional scarab at the prow, showing the coming transformation of Ra. The disc on his ram head is again united with the Urea serpent to protect him in all dangers. Wapau Wahwet, Opener of the Ways. Sia, Percipients. Lady of the Bark. Mahan, Serpent. Flesh of Ra. Haru of Fragrance. Bull of Ma'at. The Vigilant One. Hu, Utterance. Guide of the Bark. Khapari. This Nutya proceeds like this in this place. In the spine of this mysterious image of the serpent, life of the Nucharu, while the Nucharu tow him. He enters its tail and comes out from its mouth, born in his manifestation of Khapari, and the Nucharu in his bark likewise. He rests above the mysterious image of Shu, who separates the sky from the earth and from the unified darkness. It is his two arms that seal the Duat. Then this Nuchar rests in the eastern horizon of the sky, and Shu receives him as his manifestation as Khapari at the eastern river bank. Twelve Nucharu are pulling Ra with all his followers, the millions of dead, through the body of a huge serpent, entering by the tail and coming out at the mouth, thus mirroring the inversion of time necessary for the general rejuvenation. The names of the twelve Nucharu belong to their state before this rejuvenation, still old and weary. The text speaks about the rebirth to happen in the spine of the serpent. The old one, the elder, who is weak from age, the wise, who enters this life, who has passed his years, he with immense time, the venerable, lord of the venerated state, the gray-haired, he who belongs to the gray hairs, the living one. They are like this. They tow this great Nuchar through the spine of the serpent, life of the Nucharu. The venerated, deceased, of Ra, who are behind him and in front of him, they are born in the earth day after day, after the birth of this great Nuchar in the east of the sky. They enter into the mysterious image of the serpent, life of the Nucharu, 
as venerated ones, and they come out as the rejuvenated of Ra day after day. Their abomination is to shout on earth and to utter the name of the great Nichir. They are in their own bodies when going forth behind the great Nichir to the sky. Text belonging to the huge serpent. This mysterious image of the serpent, life of the Nichiru, is at his place of the Dua'at, without being able to go elsewhere day after day. This great Nuchar addresses him in his name of the serpent, smooth, to be smooth for the birth of the Nuchar. He has a spine of 1,300 units in length of divine cubits. He lives from the voice of the murmuring of the venerated ones who are in his spine and who come out from his mouth day after day the ka energy of him who makes the Nucharu live. Having passed the serpent, 13 Nucharu, looking backwards to the sun bark, as did the 12 Nucharu, grasp the towing rope. At the end of the hour, Ra is transformed into the scarab Khapari and is lifted by the arms of Shu to the eastern horizon. She who tows, she who beholds perfection of Ra, she who beholds Khapari, she who beholds the corpse of her Lord, Lady of the Rejuvenated, Lady of Time, the Eternal, she with living shoulder, she who speaks upon the bark, she who jubilates in her horizon, she who rests in her horizon, she who brings her nuchar, she who protects the East, Khepari, image of Shu. They are like this. They are those who grasp the tow rope of the bark of Ra when he comes out from the spine of the serpent, life of the Nucharu. They are those who tow this great Nuchar in the sky and who guide him to the ways of heaven. They are those who cause what happens in the sky, like wind, calmness, storm, and rain. What they decree among the living is what the great bark performs in the sky. Lower Register since this process is a renewal of creation, the lower register starts with two of the four pairs of primeval Nacheru who form the Agdod. Nun and Nunet, Hahu and Hahut. They are like this in their own bodies. They rest with Ra in the sky. They are those who receive this great Nuchar at his going forth from them in the east of the sky, day after day. They are at their gateway of the horizon, but their image of the Dua'at is at this cavern. Two groups of four Nucharu carrying paddles are separated by a fire-spitting serpent standing on its tail. The third Nuchar has a crocodile head, the fourth two birds' heads. A text stresses their struggle against uh, Pepe, who is driven away a last time before sunrise. He who is embellished, he with high authority, the terrible, the petitioner, he who burns with his eye, whose magical spells burn, foremost of his jubilation, he with powerful heart, he of the Dua'at, they are like this, carrying their oars. They are those who fend off Ha'apepi in the eastern sky after the birth of the Nuchar. What they have to do is to elevate the great sun disk in the eastern horizon of the sky day after day. It is he who burns with his eye, who boils the enemies of Ra at sunrise. These Nucharu traverse the sky behind this great Nuchar day after day, and receive their forms at this cavern. Ten more Nucharu raise their arms in adoration of Ausir. Their text gives praise to Ausir. He who praises the Ach spirits. He with brave mouth. He who donates. He who embraces. He who carries, he who makes music, he with shining arm, he with efficient mouth, he who is loaded, he who is a nuchar. They are like this, all around this image of Ausir, foremost of the unified darkness. Words spoken by them to this great nuchar, Ausir, when this great nuchar, Ra, has passed by him. Live, living one, foremost of his darkness. Live, great one, foremost of his darkness, lord of life, ruler of the west, Ausir, foremost of the westerners, and live, 
living one, foremost of the Duat. The breath of Ra belongs to your nose. The breathing of Khepari is with you, so that you live and remain alive. Hail to Ausir, Lord of Life. These are the Nucheru in the following of Ausir, who emerge with him at the creation. They are around this mysterious image at this cavern. They live on what it, the image, lives on. They breathe through the words of this great Nuchar and through their own prayers. In the last scene, Ausir himself is shown as a mummy, reclining against the semicircular border of the Duat. He has to remain in the darkness of the Duat, waiting till the next return of the sun, who is seen as his ba soul. Like him, the bodies of all dead have to remain in the depth of the earth, whereas their ba souls are able to follow the sun in the heavens. Image of the Flesh He is like this, as an image hidden by Haru in the unified darkness. It is this mysterious image which Shu supports Nut, that the great flood goes forth from the earth from this image. The Summary of the Am Duat Introduction Summary of this book the beginning is the Horn of the West. The end is unified darkness. First Hour This Nuchar enters into the Earth through the gateway of the Western Horizon. It is 120 units of measure to journey over this gateway before he reaches the Nucharu of the Duat. Waters of Ra'a is the name of the first realm of the Duat, where he assigns fields to the Nucharu following him. He begins to give orders and to take care of those of the Duat in this field. It is executed like this original in the secrecy of the Duat. He who knows these images is like the great Nucher himself. It is beneficial to him on earth, a true remedy. It is beneficial to him in the Duat, immensely. Smashing the foreheads of the enemies of Ra is the name of the first hour of the night who guides this great Nuchar in this gateway. Second hour. Setting afterwards by this great Nuchar in awareness, 309 units of measure is the length of this region, 120 units of measure its breadth. Ba souls of the Duat is the name of the Nucharu who are in this region. As for him who knows their names, he will be among them. This great Nuchar will assign him fields at their place from the region of awareness. He will pause together with the pausing one, Ra, and he will process behind this great Nuchar. He will enter the earth and he will open the Duat. He will cut off the locks of the braided ones. He will pass by the donkey swallower behind the Ma'at of the plot. Always will he eat bread in the bark of the earth and will be given the prow rope of the sun bark. These ba souls of the Duat are done in painting in their forms in the secrecy of the Duat the beginning of the writing towards the west. Offerings are made to them on the earth in their names. It is beneficial to a man on earth, a true remedy proven millions of times. He who knows these words which the Nucharu of the Duat speak to this Nuchar, and the words this Nuchar speaks to them, is one who will approach to those of the Duat. It is beneficial to him on earth, a true remedy proven millions of times. The name of this hour of the night who guides this Nuchar in this region is the wise who protects her master. Third hour. Setting afterwards by the majesty of this great Nuchar in the field of the shore dwellers, rowing by this Nuchar on the water of Ausir. 309 units of measure is the length of this field, 120 the breadth. This great Nuchar gives orders to those who follow Ausir at this place. He assigns plots to them at this field. Mysterious Ba souls is the name of the Nucheru who are in this field. He who knows their names on earth will approach the place where Ausir is. Water will be given to him at his field. Water of the unique master which brings forth offerings is the name of this field. These secret images of the mysterious Ba souls have been made in this form, which is painted in the secrecy of the Dua the beginning of the writing to the West. It is beneficial to a man on earth, and in the Khert Nuchar, a true remedy. He who knows them will pass by them. He cannot perish from their roaring, and cannot fall into their pits. Whoever knows them belongs to the places. 
his offering cake at his face together with Ra. Whoever knows them is an efficient Ba'asol, master over his two feet, who will not enter the place of annihilation. He will always go forth as an image, as one who breathes air at this hour. The name of the hour who guides this great Nuchyar in this field is She Who Cuts Ba'asols. Fourth hour. Pausing afterwards in being towed by the majesty of this great Nuchyar in the mysterious cavern of the West, caring for those who are in it by his voice without him seeing them. The name of this cavern is With Living Forms. The name of the gate of this cavern is Which Hides the Towing. Whoever knows this image of the mysterious ways of the Ra'asta'u, the unapproachable paths of the Amhat, the hidden gates which are in the land of Sokar upon his sand, is one who will eat bread beside the living in the temple of a tomb. Whoever knows it is one with just paths, going on the ways of Ra'asta'u and seeing the images of the Amhat. The name of the hour of night guiding this great Nuchyar is She Who Is Great in Her Power. Fifth hour. This great Nuchyar is towed on paths of Ma'at of the Du'at in the upper half of the mysterious cavern of Sukkot upon his sand. Unseen and unperceived is the mysterious image of the land which bears the flesh of this Nuchyar. The Nuchyar among whom this Nuchyar is, they that hear the voice of Ra when he calls to the region of this Nuchyar. The name of the gate of this place is Station of the Nuchyaru. The name of the cavern of this Nuchyar is West. The mysterious ways of the West, the gates of the hidden chamber, the unapproachable place of the land of Sukkar. Flesh, members, and body in their first manifestation. The name of the Nuchyaru who are in this cavern is Ba'asols who are in the Du'at. Their shapes are that which is in their hours, their mysterious forms. Unknown, unseen, and unperceived is this image of Haru himself. This is done like this image which is painted in the secrecy of the Du'at on the southern side of the hidden chamber. Whoever knows it, his Ba'aso will be content, and he will be content with the offerings of Sokar. The violent one cannot cut his corpse. He will pass her in peace. Offerings are made to these Nucharu on earth. The name of the hour of the night who guides this great Nuchyar in this cavern is She Who Guides in the Midst of Her Bark. Sixth Hour Setting by the majesty of this great Nuchyar into the depths of the waterhole of those of the Du'at. He gives orders to the Nucharu who are in it. He orders that they take hold of their divine offerings at this place. He proceeds in this. Equipped with his bark, he assigns to them their plots for their offerings. He gives to them water from their waterway when passing the Du'at day after day. The name of the gate of this place is With Sharp Knives. The mysterious path of the West, whose water this great Nuchar traverses in his bark to care for those of the Du'at. Registered in their names, known in their bodies, and carved in their forms are their hours, mysterious in their state, without this secret image of the Du'at being known by any person. This image is painted in this way in the secrecy of the Du'at, on the southern side of the hidden chamber. Whoever knows it will belong to the offerings in the Du'at. He will be satisfied with the offerings of the Nucheru following Ausir. Offerings will be given to him and his family in the earth. Orders are given by the person of this Nucheru to present divine offerings to the Nucheru of the Du'at. When he pauses by them, they see him and take possession of their fields. Their offerings, they emerge by order of this great Nuchyar. The depths of the waterhole of those of the Du'at is the name of this field. It is the path of the bark of Ra. The name of the hour of the night guiding this great Nuchyar in this region is a rival that gives the right way. Seventh hour. Resting by the majesty of this great Nuchyar in the cavern of Ausir, giving orders by the majesty of this great Nuchyar at this cavern to those Nuchyaru who are in it. This Nuchyar takes another form in this cavern. He confounds Ah Pepi from the way through the magic of Auset and the eldest magician. The name of the gate of this place, which this Nuchyar passes by, Gate of Ausir, is its name. The name of this place is Mysterious Cavern. The secret path of the West, 
upon which this great Nutyar passes in his unapproachable bark, he proceeds on this way, which is without water and without the possibility of towing. He sails by the magic of Auset and the eldest magician, and by the magic power on the mouth of this Nutyar himself. The slaughtering of a Pepi is done in the Duat, in this cavern. His place, however, is in the sky. It is painted in this way on the northern side of the hidden chamber of the Duat. It is beneficial for whom it is made in heaven and in earth. Whoever knows it is one of the Ba souls with Ra. Executed are these magic spells of Auset and the eldest magician, which they perform as a repelling of A Pepi from Ra in the west. It is done in the secrecy of the Dua, and it is done on earth likewise. Whoever knows it will be in the bark of Ra in heaven and in earth. It is simple to know this image, but who does not know it cannot repel horrible a face. As for this sandbank of horrible a face in the Duat, it is 450 units of measure in its length, and he fills it with his coils. His slaughter is made against him without this Nutyar passing by him. When he makes his way around him at the cavern of Ausir, this Nutyar passes along in this place in the image of the Mahan serpent. Whoever knows it, horrible face cannot drink his water. The Ba soul of him who knows it cannot perish through the violence of the Nutyaru who are in this cavern. Whoever knows it will be one whose Ba soul the crocodile will not swallow. The name of the hour of the night guiding this great Nutyar in this cavern is She who repels the evil one and slaughters horrible a face. Eighth hour. Resting by the majesty of this great Nutyar at the caverns of the mysterious Nutyaru who are upon their sand. He gives orders to them from his bark to his Nutyaru who tow him in the protecting embrace of the Mahan serpent. The name of the gate of this place is Standing Without Getting Tired. The name of this place is Casket of Her Nutyaru. The mysterious caverns of the west which the great Nutyaru passes in his bark being towed by his Nutyaru who are in the Dua. This is done like this image which is painted on the northern side of the hidden chamber of the Dua. Whoever knows them by their names will have clothing in the earth, and will not be repelled from the mysterious gates. He will be fed at the great tomb, a true remedy. The name of the hour of the night guiding this great Nutyar is Mistress of the Deep Night. Ninth Hour Resting by the majesty of this great Nutyar in this cavern, he gives orders from his bark to the Nutyaru who are in it. The crew of the bark of this great Nutyar also rests at this place. The name of the gate of this place through which this great Nutyar passes, that he sets upon the waterway, which is in this place, is Guardian of the Flood. The name of this place is, with images flowing forth. The mysterious cavern of the west, where this great Nutyar and his crew rest in the Duat. These are done with their names, like this image which is painted on the eastern side of the hidden chamber of the Duat. Whoever knows their names on earth, and knows their thrones in the west, will occupy his throne in the Duat, standing among the lords of provisions, and declared true of voice, Ma'a Charu, by the tribunal on the day of judgment. It is beneficial to whoever knows it on earth. The name of the hour of night guiding this great Nutyar in this cavern is, She who adores and protects her lord. Tenth hour. Resting by the majesty of this great Nutyar in this cavern, he gives orders to the Nutyaru who are in it. The name of the gate of this place through which this great Nutyar passes is with great manifestations, giving birth to forms. The name of this place is with deep water and high banks. The mysterious cavern of the west at which Khabari rests with Ra, at which Nutyaru, Ach, spirits and the dead lament because of the mysterious image of the beyond. This is done like this image which is painted on the eastern side of the hidden chamber of the Duat. Whoever knows them by name traverses the Duat right to the end, without being repelled from the lights of the sky with Ra. The name of the hour of the night guiding this great Nutyar to the mysterious paths of this place is the Furious who slaughters him with crooked heart. Eleventh hour. Resting by the majesty of this great Nutyar in this cavern, he gives orders to the Nutyaru who are in it. 
The name of the gate of this place, through which this great Nachar passes, is Resting Place of Those of the Du'at. The name of this place is Mouth of the Cavern which Examines the Corpses. The mysterious cavern of the Du'at, through which this great Nachar passes, to come out from the eastern mountain of heaven. Time swallows her images in front of the seer who is in this place. She gives them back afterwards for the birth of Chepari in the earth. This is done in this form, like this image which is painted in the secrecy of the Du'at, on the eastern side of the hidden chamber. Whoever knows it, participates in offerings as a well-provided Ach spirit, in heaven and in earth, a true remedy. The name of the hour of the night guiding this great Nachar in this cavern is Starry Lady of the Bark, who repels the enemy when he appears. Twelfth Hour Resting by the majesty of this great Nuchar in this cavern, end of the unified darkness. This great Nuchar is born in his manifestation of Chapari in this cavern. Noon and Nanut, Hachu and Hachud emerge at this cavern at the birth of this great Nuchar, that he comes out from the Dua'at. He places himself in the Ma'anjet Debark and appears from the thighs of Nut. The name of the gate of this place is that which raises the Nacharu. The name of this place is with emerging darkness and appearing births. The mysterious cavern of the Dua'at, at which this great Nachar is born, that he comes out from the Nun, and that he sets at the body of Nut. This is done like this image which is painted on the eastern side of the hidden chamber of the Dua'at. It is beneficial for whoever knows it on earth in heaven and in the earth. Closing text. The beginning is light. The end is unified darkness. The course of Ra in the west, the secret plans which this Nuchar brings forth in it, the excellent guide, the secret writing of the Du'at, which is not known by any person save a few. This image is done like this in the secrecy of the Du'at, unseen and unperceived. Whoever knows this mysterious image will be a well-provided Ach spirit. Always will he leave and enter again the Du'at and speak to the living. A true remedy proven a million times. Ach, Uja, Senab. <laughs>